Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first presentation for the Boys Town Pediatrics Spring Newborn Expo. My name is Gabby, and I am your host for the week. We are going live every day at noon central time with a board-certified Boys Town pediatrician talking about an array of topics that relate to you and your newborn. So whether it's your first baby or you know, second, third, whatever number of babies, this will be a great presentation for you to watch to help prepare your family for its expansion. So today we're live here with Dr. Megan Sauer. Dr. Sauer, how are you doing? I'm good. Thanks, Gabby. Thanks good. For having me today. Of course. It's great to have you. So we are going to be discussing hot weather and newborn tips for newborns. So we're going to go back and forth here on an array of discussion questions. So if you're watching live and you have a question on this topic, go ahead and drop it in the comments section or message our page. And we are also doing a live giveaway. So we're going to be doing the giveaway here at the end of the video. So make sure you like this video and drop a comment below to be entered. You can comment a question. Like I mentioned, you can comment and let us know you're excited to be watching. If you're watching live and you maybe haven't announced your pregnancy and you don't want to have a public comment, you can always message our page directly, privately, and that will count as an entry as well. Okay, so let's hop right into these discussion questions. The first one is, what are some things to keep in mind if I have a newborn in the middle of the summer or in hot weather wherever you live? So great question. I think um, one of the best things to remember is the warm, sunny summer days can be a great time for you and your family to be outside enjoying the nicer, um, longer, brighter days. Um, and just if we keep in mind just some basic safety tips, you can still enjoy the summer even with a newborn. So hopefully yeah. we'll go over some of those safety things today with some of our questions, um, just to review ways that you can stay safe with your newborn outside. Yes. The next question is, let's talk sunblock. That's a hot question that we got a few times. So what type of sunblocking is appropriate for newborn? You know, sunscreen, sunglasses, hats, things like that. So great question. So really, I think the um, foundation for sun safety with newborns really involves actually trying to keep them out of the sun. And so the best way to do that is to keep them in a shaded area, whether that's under the shade of a tree or an umbrella or the canopy of your stroller. Um, but we still want um, families with newborns to be able to get out and enjoy the um, summer days. So if that's not possible to stay in the shade, we just recommend moderation. So shorter times in the sun. You can obviously keep your newborn's um, head shaded with a sun hat. Um, and if you did need to apply sunscreen, you would just do it in very um, small areas, like to the back of the hands or um, the cheeks or maybe the tops of their feet. Um, so if shade is not an option, because that really is the best for a newborn, then you want to just try to take some preventative measures to limit their sun exposure with some of those other options. Mm -hmm. And that made me think, you know, of a question too, how long is, is too long for a baby to be out in the sun? So I'm thinking, you know, if we're going to the beach or to the park, is there a recommended time frame for that? So there's no real concrete um, time frame, but with some uh, knowledge, you can limit the risk. So um, one thing that we know is that the UV exposure from the sun is highest um, in the daytime hours from like 10 to four. So one way, if you know you're going to be outside and want to get to the beach, um, you could have your baby out in the sun, maybe in the first part of the morning or in the later parts of the afternoon when those UV rays are less um, strong. So that's one option, kind of first part of the morning and later part of the afternoon. And then I would just um, do it in smaller spurts. So if you are going to be at the beach for the day with the family, you want to try to maximize the time under the shaded umbrella or with the sun hat on. So again, no um, concrete um, chunk of time, but just um, just use kind of common sense. If you're getting overheated and hot as an adult, then that means that your newborn is going to be experiencing those same effects from the sun. So again, less is more for the sun exposure for the newborn. Perfect. And another thing that's common in the summer is, you know, those mosquitoes really come out and it gets pretty buggy. So what about bug spray? Can babies have, can they wear bug spray or mosquito bands? What would you recommend for that? Sure. So usually the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends not using bug spray for babies until they're at least two months of age. And again, just like minimizing sun exposure, there's also ways to minimize 
um, exposure to the insects, whether it's like a um, netting, like if you're going to have your baby, let's say outside of your family is going camping, you know, and you want your baby to be laying maybe on a mat, they do have some, you know, netted covers that the baby could still, you know, have fresh air and be breathing, but not be exposed to those bugs. But I would wait on the bug spray until two months of age or older. And then after that, um, you know, most uh, uh, recommendations are that DEET, that uh, chemical, um, provides some of the best protection against bites and mosquitoes. And so we recommend no DEET used if it's um, a higher than a 30% um, strength. And the higher um, the percentage of that bug spray number, the longer it gives you protection. So if you know you're only going to be outside for a shorter period of time, then you could use a lower percentage of DEET because you don't need um, such a long amount of coverage time. So I think like a 10% DEET gives you about two hours of bug protection coverage. Um, so you can kind of use those, um, you know, use the information on the bottles to kind of give you a perspective on how much you're going to need for how long. Mm -hmm. And then same with sunscreen. Do you have any recommendations? So great question. The most important thing with the sunscreen is that you use something that's called broad spectrum. So it covers both the UVA and the UVB um, rays from the sun. Um, and I recommend at least using an SPF of at least 15. And then a couple other tips that are good is you want to try to remember to put the sunscreen on 15 to 30 minutes before you have the sun exposure. So it has time to provide the blocking, um, you know, the sun blocking ray protection that you need. Um, and then just to also be mindful about frequent reapplication. Um, so, you know, if you're going to be outside for a long day, either at the pool or the beach or outside hiking or at the playground, you know, at least every hour and a half to two hours, you want to reapply. And that would um, also be, you want to be mindful of that if you're swimming, even though it'll say, you know, maybe waterproof sunscreen, you still have to reapply if you're going to be at the pool all day, um, you know, at least every two hours to reapply to those um, sensitive skin areas that are exposed to the sun. Yes, I see some great comments coming through. So thank you, everyone. Keep commenting. If you have a question on hot weather newborn tips, go ahead, comment it, and we'll answer it here at the end for our Q&A. The next one is how, oh, we already talked about that one, about how long is too long to stay in the sun. But what are some, some signs of what we should watch for if we think, you know, maybe baby needs to get out of the heat for a little bit? Sure. So, um, I mean, first, you obviously want to, as a parent, just be mindful if you're out like in the hottest part of the day in the middle of the afternoon and you're starting to feel the effects of that. We know that that's going to impact your newborn as well. But other things to look for would be you know, flushing of the cheeks, or you notice some sweat beads on their forehead. Um, maybe they're fussy or more irritable, or alternatively, if maybe they're not waking up as frequently as they should be for those feeds, those are all signs um, that maybe they've had a little bit too much of the sun exposure. Um, another thing would be maybe if you're not noticing like the changing up, you're not having to change wet diapers as often as they normally do, or they're not feeding as vigorously as they usually do. All of those things are probably signs that maybe your newborn needs to take a break, maybe head inside, go to a cooler area um, to get away from some of those, um, you know, effects that the sun and the heat can do to all of us. Yes. Awesome. Can newborns have allergies? And if so, what do I do about that? So that's a great question. So usually when we think of like the outdoor allergens, like trees and grasses and pollens, usually that's not super common in the newborn period, just because their little system hasn't been exposed to all of those things um, for a long enough time for them to be truly having allergies. And so um, one thing I recommend is just if you do have concerns that you're child is experiencing some allergy symptoms, like it seems like they're rubbing their nose or their eyes are watery or their um, little nose is runny or drippy. I think you need to just check in with your pediatrician to kind of go over those symptoms and have them evaluated to make sure that there's nothing concerning going on. Because usually outdoor aller allergies per se are not super common in the newborn period. Great. Good to know. If my child gets too much sun and has a sunburn, how do I treat that with a newborn? 
So really, if a newborn or any child under age one develops a sunburn, so if you would notice like the red warmth to the skin, I think that's really appropriate for you to call your pediatrician or doctor to, to go over that with them. Uh, this is something that can easily happen inadvertently, but I think in the newborn or under one year of age, it's definitely something that you want to check in with your doctor about. So specifically with the newborn, call your doctor. If it's an older child, one of the best things to do is remove them from the sun. Obviously, go to an area where there's shade or it's inside and cool. Um, you want to make sure that you're staying really well hydrated, so replace possible fluid loss by um, having the child drink extra water or juice. And again, this only applies to older children, um, like cool water to the sun exposed area, sunburn area can be good or like a cool washcloth or wrap. Um, but I think the most important thing, if it's specifically with newborns who have been burned, you want to check in with your doctor um, and obviously try as quickly as possible to remove the child from any additional sun exposure until that sun is healed. Mm -hmm. What about using aloe vera? Can you use that on a young baby? I think that's an okay thing to apply to the skin. It can have a um, cooling sensation. But again, if it's in the newborn period and the baby's been burned, I would definitely want um, parents to call in and check with their doctor to go over any other symptoms or concerns about how the baby's doing um, if, that, if that sunburn has happened. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely a theme you guys will find throughout our live presentations this week. It is no question is too small when it comes to calling your pediatrician. So definitely want to emphasize that. Absolutely. And Town Pediatrics also does have same day pediatrics. So, you know, if you need to get your baby seen right away, we have that within our clinic. So, yes, I just had a question said, just got on. What did I miss? So you can always go back and watch this presentation too after the live concludes. It doesn't go away. So it's saved as a video on our Facebook page and our YouTube page. So if you need to rewind, maybe even when your baby comes in a few weeks or months, you can always watch these back. And we have a few, I think we've done three or four other expos with week-long presentations too. So I'll link that playlist to you guys after this live so you can go back and watch the other ones we have. Okay, so with that, we only have a few more questions here for Dr. Sauer before we get into the live Q&A. So now is the time to leave your comments, leave your questions, and you'll be entered to win today's giveaway. We're giving away a quad foldable chair with a carrying case and a summer baby items from our friends at Nebraska, to Nebraska Total Care. So thank you for that. Okay. The next question is, at what age is it okay to take my baby swimming? So if you want to talk about that, you know, the shallow end, getting them in the water, introductions to that, that would be great. Yep. So great question. Obviously, pool and um, water time can be a great family activity in the summer. There's no formal recommendation from the American Academy of Pediatrics on um, the age when a child should be taken swimming, but most pediatricians would recommend usually about six months of age for getting the baby in the water. And that's um, mainly because they have better head control. So it's easier to have them stay upright in the water and um, just better control of the trunk. And again, if you're going to have, you know, that baby about that age in the pool, a couple things that you can do just to help make it a safe experience. Obviously, you're going to find your cute little swim diapers for them. And then really easy for the six month old to have that um, shaded sun hat on to minimize the um sun exposure to their face, you know, you can definitely find cute little um, pediatric or kid size, baby size uh, sunglasses that block out the UV rays for the um, exposure to the eyes. And then obviously, if you don't, there's like rash guards or other um, materials that are safe in the water for the um, skin to have minimized sun exposure. But then obviously, we'd recommend using sunscreen for any skin, ex excuse me, sun exposed skin areas, mm -hmm. if you're going to be in the water. So no formal recommendation, but usually around six months is a pretty good um, age where you could start doing some water time in the pool or um, other, other areas for the summer fun. Yes, so fun. So, you know, the next, the next couple points I have, they're not necessarily questions, but we wanted to make sure that we work them in as discussion points and can get your advice on this stuff. So could you talk more about, you know, keeping baby safe in the car, especially in the summer when it's hot and making sure that whenever we go places, we want to make sure to always check and keep baby safe. Yep. So great. Um, 
great discussion launching point just because we've all seen those um, you know, tragic articles where a child is left in the car. So mm -hmm. um, the cars can heat up really quickly in the summer. And so um, a couple things you want to make sure that um, if it's a really hot day that you have um, the air conditioning going and perhaps the canopy of your baby's car seat open so air can circulate better. And then even though sometimes um, blankets are sort of used to shield the baby from um, the elements or the sun, we want to make sure that especially in the car, that there's no blanketing of the um, car seat just so there is good air circulation. And then we strongly recommend that you never leave your um, newborn or child in the car, even if you're just running in quickly to drop something off or um, you know, pick something up. Um, utilize you know, drive-through services if you can, where things can be brought out to you. Um, just so that the babies are never left alone unattended in the vehicle. And then most especially just so that there is not the risk for forgetting that your child is in the back car is to leave something in the back seat by the car seat that you know you're going to remember to grab like your purse or even the set of car keys, perhaps even your cell phone. Um, just as a reminder, so you know when you're getting out of the car, you're going to grab not only your purse and your cell phone and car keys, but also that baby carry and bring the child in with you wherever you're going next. So there's no inadvertent, um, you know, forgetting, forgetting the child in the backseat. Yeah. Great point to mention. Okay. So let's get into some of the questions in the comments. Thank you everyone for leaving them. We really appreciate it and are happy to help you out. So I see a lot of, a lot of comments, you know, our first is due in June. Our first is due July 4th, due in April. So congratulations, everyone. It's such an exciting time. So let me look for these questions here. I'm going to scroll up. Um, is there an age, you know, one week, one month, et cetera, when baby is still considered too young to apply sunscreen? So, you know, a lot of people will say you really don't want to have to put it on before two months of age okay. because really those newborns should be in the shade and not having the sun exposure I think if they're under six months and they're going to for sure get sun exposure, it's better to have put a little bit of sunscreen on even the newborn um, than to not and have risk of a sunburn. So um, like, I, like I mentioned earlier in the presentation, you want to just do limited areas. So do as much as you can with lightweight clothing that would offer sun protection, the hat. But really, if your newborn is going to have sun exposure, it would be better to do small amounts of sunscreen than to have them the, have the risk of sunburn. Yes. What is a good age to start introducing baby to swim lessons and more water things? So again, I think it's important for babies to have some head and neck control. And so usually for sure after six months, and a lot of places don't offer them until babies are at least nine months to a year. Swim lessons are super important because we know water can be a life-threatening um, element that can cause, you know, drowning risks. So I think it's great that you're already thinking ahead of, um, you know, when can I get my baby into swim lessons? And so I would say, you know, do your research with programs that are offered around town, but most of them probably aren't going to accept babies until probably about the nine month age. Um, and, you know, just until that age, when your baby um, starts swim lessons and has um, secure water safety practices, you just always want to make sure that there is an adult present if your baby is around water, um, just to keep them safe until they're um, able, able swimmers. Mm -hmm. awesome. How do I keep my car seat from getting too hot when I'm not using it? So one of the best ways, obviously, would be to have it not in the, in the direct sun, um, and most of the time with a newborn, you know, your car seat is the one that has the base that stays in the car. And then when you take the baby places, you're going to unclip the carrier and take that with you. And so again, I think the main thing when you take that carrier with you would be to not have it in direct sun exposure. And then I guess other times, if you would just take the infant out of the seat is maybe don't leave it in the car because that will just, it will be very hot. Those metal buckle parts can really heat up in the sun. So I would say don't leave it in the car um, with the baby not in it because 
that will just make it too hot when you're going to put it in the baby back in the carrier. So I'd say take the carrier inside to try to keep it cooler. Mm -hmm. And if for some reason it does warm up, you would just want to make sure with your own hands and skin that you check those metal fasteners before you would put the child in there before um, you'd put the baby back into the seat to make sure you're not going to, they're not going to risk any, any burns on the skin from those hot buckles. Great. The next question's kind of both of them tie in great. So, you know, in the, in the summertime, you're going to want to go out and still go on walks with baby. So I think these next two questions really help apply to that. So um, the first one is, is it bad to have a fan going right on a newborn? And then the next question is, can you talk more about blankets over strollers as well? So maybe if you want to give us a good setup for summer sure. walks. Yeah. yeah, no, I think it's great to get outdoors and walking with your baby is good for both parents and the newborn to get the fresh air. And so again, earlier in the talk, I mentioned that um, if it's the really um, dog days of summer where it's really hot and humid, you want to try to minimize the heat and sun exposure by maybe doing early morning walks or later in the evening when it's not quite so um, hot and sticky. So like I said, timing, I think is important. As far as the fan, I think if it's a really hot, humid day, a fan would be absolutely fine to have blowing directly on the newborn, um, just to maybe keep the skin and the baby cooler and drier. So if, you know, you can always test that out on yourself first, if it's not, you know, a super vigorous or strong fan, but it's just to provide some air movement, I think that is an okay option. Just test it out on yourself first. And then as far as the, you know, blankets and coverings over the stroller, um, we just want to make sure if it's really hot and humid that there's still enough ability for air to circulate around the baby. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of strollers now have an option where it's almost like a mesh cover versus like a full blanket, which would not allow any air to get into the baby. And so I would opt for, you know, using the canopy, which can be moved um, to um, help block some of those sun rays without totally um, kind of sealing off the the newborn from any air movement or exposure. So just utilize, you know, the blankets um, in a minimal fashion. And if you are going to use them, just make sure there is an ability for air to get in and circulate around the baby. Awesome. Thank you. What are the best clothes and layers for sleeping in the summer when the AC is on? So usually most pediatricians recommend that the layering and clothing that you're going to do for a baby is going to be very similar to what you would do with an adult, knowing that most adults, even if it's, um, you know, summer and the air conditioning is running, most adults use like a sheet or a blanket in their bed when they sleep. And we can't do that for a baby. Um, you know, we recommend no um, blankets or pillows or anything else in the baby's sleeping space or crib. And so if you think about that, um, I think one of the best options that can be used are they have some of those cotton sleep sacks that can be used. So cotton's a good breathable material. And so you would have baby or newborn kind of in the maybe one layer of clothes, much like adults wear when they go to bed. And then you can utilize one of those sleep sacks or um, other coverings over the baby in place of the blanket, since we don't recommend using that in the sleeping space for a newborn to keep them warm enough with the air conditioning, but not over bundled and too hot. Um, you don't want to over layer a child. You want to have a mirror very similarly what you would do for other older children or your own self while you're sleeping. Awesome. Are there certain window shades or decals for the car that are better, better than others? You know, I don't have any specific brands that I would recommend. Um, you want to utilize those that, um, you know, work to your advantage to, you know, kind of block out the annoying glaring sun for your baby in the seat. Um, and a lot of newer vehicles actually have them built in that you can utilize and just put up or down, which are already in the window space. I don't have any specific ones that I recommend. You would just want to make sure that they're approved to be used in cars with car seats around that they're stable and wouldn't be able to fly off the windows if there was, you know, a severe accident or whatnot to cause any harm or damage to the children or infants that are in the, in the passenger area. Mm -hmm. Great. If you have a newborn, how can you ensure that he or she is hydrated beyond their regular feeding schedule? So again, you want to use your own body's cues. Um, so if you're feeling thirsty or dehydrated, then that probably applies to other members of your family. 
And one of the things to remember in the newborn period is really up until six months, the only fluids that newborns should receive is either breast milk or um, their regularly prepared formula. And so um, we don't recommend giving extra water to newborns. We would just recommend that if you're outside in the heat for an extended period of time is to nurse or offer the bottle of either pumped milk, breast milk or formula more frequently to make sure that they're getting the hydration that they need for that um, hot summer weather. Perfect. All right, we're gonna do just a couple more questions and then we're gonna draw for the giveaway. So if we haven't gotten to your question, I you know, I can always message Dr. Sauer after this and get you an answer and send it to you directly. So I'll, I'll try and do that after this is over. Um, what is a recommended room temperature for a baby's room? Um, so usually you wanna keep it um, not too hot and not too cold. So I would say usually kind of in the 68 to 72 range is, um, kind of a, a good temp for year round with whether you're running your heater in the winter or needing to cool your home in the summer. Um, but you know, it's expensive to cool and heat your home these, these days. So right. you want to just, um, you know, use that information with some pluses or minuses to best fit your, you know, family's needs. Um, but remember with babies, we want to keep it very similar to what's done. That's comfortable for you and your family. So, um, that's sort of just a, ball, a ballpark. Yes. Okay, great. And just a reminder, if you have a question on, you know, sunscreen or maybe a few other things, we, this video will be saved on our page. So you can always rewind it and watch it back. And we did touch on some of those things. So thank you for your questions. And I had, you know, as we were chatting live, I had my coworker go ahead and plug everyone's names in for our live giveaway. So we did a fun little I'll show it on my phone, this little wheel with everyone's names. So the winner is going to be Ashley K. So congrats, Ashley. If you would please message our page and we can coordinate you picking up your prize. So thank you so much, everyone, for your comments. We are going to be live tomorrow at noon central time with Dr. Micah Ryan discussing common infant illnesses. So make sure you tune in to watch then and you have another chance to win a giveaway. Like I said, we're doing them every day this week. We have linked above this video our RSVP form for the expo. So make sure you fill that out and then you'll be entered to win a grand prize giveaway, which is a newborn photo shoot with Nikki McLeay Photography, who is our friend and graciously is giving that away. Um, I'll also link to, like I said, our playlist with our previous Newborn Expo videos. I'll link our meet and greet form. So if you enjoyed watching Dr. Sauer today and want to request a free meet and greet with her to maybe get to know her for a pediatrician for your child, I'll go ahead and put that. And anything else you guys need, go ahead and message our page and we'll get you where you need to go. So thank you so much, Dr. Sauer, for your time today. Of course. It was great to be here. Thanks. All right. We'll see you all tomorrow for day two of the expo. Have a great day.